for joining me to keep up with the fast world of data science. Now buckle up as we leap inside the black box. In this episode, we stay on the theme of tech companies pushing slick statistics to move products and sway policy. Another product that has been making headlines for the wrong reason is the e-cigarette or vaping. Hundreds of young people have fallen sick with lung illnesses that are tentatively linked to vaping. As of today, eight people have died. Like Tesla, e-cigarette companies put out the claim that their product saves lives. They argue that the death rate from vaping will be far below that of uh, smoking traditional cigarettes, which is known to cause cancer. This argument falls down for the same reason as Tesla's claim of saving lives. These companies are using and advertising the wrong comparisons. Let me break this down for you. We have two worlds, the pre-vaping world and the post-vaping world. The pre-vaping world is binary. People can choose to smoke or not to smoke. In the post-vaping world, we have four types of people. You can choose to smoke traditional cigarettes, to smoke e-cigarettes, or you can do both or do neither. Let's roll time forward. As we cross from the pre-vaping world to the post-vaping world, there are now eight subgroups of people. The vaping companies cherry pick one of these subgroups, the switches from traditional cigarettes to e-cigarettes. For this subgroup, it is reasonable to believe that the death risk will fall, unless there are harms of e-cigarettes as yet unknown. This feel-good story is not the full story. It fails to account for the seven other subgroups. For example, some non-smokers may decide to smoke e-cigarettes because they believe that e-cigarettes are less harmful than traditional cigarettes. However, not smoking is less harmful than smoking e-cigarettes. So the health risk of this subgroup has increased. Looking back at our diagram, I can safely eliminate four of the subgroups because they are not affected by the launch of vaping. For example, the smokers who continue to smoke traditional cigarettes and the non-smokers who continue to not smoke at all. Their behavior is not affected by the launch of e-cigarettes and so I can safely ignore them. How about the non-smokers who started smoking traditional cigarettes but not e-cigarettes after the launch of e-cigarettes. This change of behavior is not likely to be affected by the launch of vaping and therefore I can ignore them too. Symmetrically, there are some former smokers who now neither smoke nor vape. This change of behavior is also unlikely to be affected by the launch of e-cigarettes and therefore we can omit this group from our analysis. Let's look at our diagram again. There are still two subgroups that we haven't talked about yet. One of these groups are former non-smokers who now start to both smoke traditional cigarettes and e-cigarettes. This subgroup will see the largest increase in the health risk. Remember the industry telling us about smokers who switch to vaping. Their story holds only if the switch is 100%. In reality, it is likely that the smokers are now both smoking as well as vaping. In this case, their health risk would have increased or at best stayed the same. In summary, of the eight subgroups that we have seen, four of them are irrelevant to the analysis because their behavior is not affected by the launch of vaping. Of the four relevant subgroups, only one of them is likely to see a reduction in health risk. And that subgroup are the smokers who switch 100% to vaping. The other three subgroups will likely see an increase in health risk. Which of these subgroups do you think the vaping companies are making stories about. You got it. It's
it's the group of smokers who switch 100% to vaping. From a public health perspective, we have to worry about all four subgroups. And these four subgroups are not all the same size. Your conclusion will be based on two factors. One, of the people who are smoking, what proportion of them will switch 100% to vaping and what proportion will both smoke and vape? And two, of those who were non-smokers, what proportion will now start to vape because they think vaping is safe? The industry's story about vaping saving lives is based on the fiction that almost every smoker will switch 100% to vaping. Statistical analysis is all about making comparisons. And when making comparisons, we want to compare to the right things. In the case of Tesla, which I discussed in the last episode, the right comparison is to luxury cars. The wrong comparison is to all American cars. In the case of vaping, the right analysis explores the effects of all relevant subgroups, while the wrong analysis cherry picks the one segment for which the new technology may bring possible benefits, while ignoring all other segments for which there might be potential harm. If you like this video, please share it with your friends and hit that subscribe button. See you next time inside the Black Box. Principal Analytics Prep. Prepping you for the data revolution. Mm -hmm.